It's often not the destination which matters most, but what we discover of God and of ourselves on the journey. That's what stays with us and shapes us into fuller people. Ordinary time. Ordinary, yes, but perhaps not quite so ordinary as we softly tread in the footsteps of Jesus. And in the unexpected twists of a well-spun parable and the turns of lives redirected anew towards God, we embrace the adventure, growing taller yet. Hello and welcome to Windows on Worship. My name is Carl and it's really good to have you with us, especially if you're tuning in for the first time. You're very welcome. This week we're going to be exploring a passage that perhaps in the early part is a little obscure, but ends with some of Jesus' most famous sayings about inviting those who were weary to come to him and find rest. And we'll be thinking about what might sustain us today in our discipleship amid these challenging times. Before we dive into any of this, however, if you've not done so already, you might find it useful to download the worship sheet accompanying this act of worship. You can find the link to that in the video description in YouTube, but you may need to click on show more in order to reveal it. The front side of the worship sheet has some space for you to make your own notes as we go along, some questions for you to ponder along the way, and various places where you're invited to share your thoughts and prayers with others in the comments section, particularly if you're watching the premiere and can use the live chat function in YouTube. The reverse side of the worship sheet contains the jukebox playlist a set of YouTube videos chosen especially to help you go further in your praying and pondering through the week. And so as we gather together before God in our different places, we bring our opening prayer for ordinary time. The words of this prayer, and indeed the words of all the prayers and responses we'll share together today, will appear on the screen. Please join in with those words in yellow and bold type either in your head or out loud, as you're most comfortable. Let us pray. God of adventure and growth, open our hearts, ready our minds, and fire our imaginations, so that as we gather together before you, use technology to connect with each other, and ponder the life-giving stories of Jesus, we might discover more of your goodness and be swept up by the Holy Spirit as she nurtures, disturbs and inspires us on our journey into fullness of life. Amen. Each week on Windows on Worship we offer a starter for 10 question that's there to get you thinking about the subject matter for the week. You might just want to think about this question by yourself, but if you'd like to share your response with others, please type it into either the main comments or the live chat. So this week's starter for 10 is, think of a time when you felt like you've come to the end of your own resources. What helped sustain you?
For our prayers of thanks and praise this week, we're going to listen to a song called Strength Will Rise, or sometimes called Everlasting God, which if you have a copy of the Methodist Tim book, Singing the Faith, you can find at number 89. As you listen to this song, if you have any thanksgivings you'd like to share with others, do please type them into either the live chat or the main comments. But either way, please use this hymn and its words to bring your own thanks and praises to God. And at the end, we'll come together with a short response. Let us pray. Oh 
And so, faithful and ever-present God, receive our thanks and praises. Amen. The psalm that's set for this week is Psalm 145, verses 8 to 14. Let us pray. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known your mighty deeds and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And so mindful of the ways that we fall short of the love of God, individually and collectively, we bring our prayers of renewal. Let us pray. God of rest and refreshment, we bring to you those things in our own lives and within the life of our broken and messy world in need of renewal and restoration at this time. for the words and actions for which we are sorry. Grant us your forgiveness. For the burdens we carry and the sorrows we bear, bring us your comfort. For the struggles we may experience, to trust that we are loved. Offer us your assurance. For the injustice and oppression which blights our world, inspire us to respond courageously. And for the failings and disunity of your church, make us ready to change. God of rest and refreshment, thank you that you forgive, restore us and send us out to be bearers of hope and justice and to bring new life for our words and actions. Amen. Amen. 
Our reading for this week comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 16 to 19, and then verses 25 to 30. As you hear it read, keep your ear open for any particular words or phrases or ideas that jump out to you. You might want to make a note of them in the space that's provided for that on the worship sheet, because these could point to the things the Holy Spirit especially wants to say to you today through this text. Jesus said, But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say look a glutton and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time Jesus said I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. This is one of the most famous of Jesus' sayings, and his words here, I think, are full of comfort. After all, all of us at some point or another will have found ourselves carrying a heavy burden on our shoulders. And particularly as we continue to grapple with the ongoing impacts of a global pandemic and the cost of living crisis, which has enveloped so many people, many of us are more than a little bit weary right now. So given how comforting Jesus's words are, it might surprise us to learn that actually they emerge on the back of two sets of challenges that Jesus offers. Firstly, in verses 7 to 19 of chapter 11 of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus challenges those who would turn to John the Baptist in the wilderness, but without really knowing what they were seeking. And in verses 20 to 24, Jesus challenges the various cities where his older cousin's message of repentance had not been heeded. So in short then, this promise of rest for tired souls comes hot on the heels of pointing out that although the two cousins, Jesus and John, differed in their pathway that they offered to God, neither of them, it seems, had been taken seriously enough and both had been criticised, though for sort of equal and opposite reasons, if you will. Jesus' teaching, it seems, had resonated not with the wise and intelligent folk, in other words, those religious leaders and experts who thought they knew the ways of God, but instead they'd resonated with those he calls infants who were taking their first faltering steps on the road of faith. It is people like this who would, by God's grace, be able to take upon themselves the yoke of Christ. 
Now, if we're going to make some sense of this, we need to connect what we're looking at in this reading with the story of Moses. Matthew very much views Jesus as the successor to the great figure of the Exodus story who led the people of Israel out of oppression in Egypt and into the land of Canaan after decades of preparation. If we look at the book of Exodus, and specifically chapter 33, verses 12 to 23, we find a really curious episode between God and Moses, who, remember, received the law from God on Mount Sinai. We find Moses longing to know God as deeply as he is already known by God. And even if that means that all he can see is God passing by and catch a glimpse of God's rear, if you will, as God goes by, then that's enough for Moses. So it's a passage which is about knowing. We know, as modern readers of the text, that the knowing and being known between the Father and the Son, the depth and profundity of that knowledge, surpasses anything that had come previously, including the relationship between Moses and the God of Israel. And the offer that we find in Exodus 33 of rest that God made to Moses is now proclaimed through Jesus to all who would come to him. When, in verse 29 in today's reading, Jesus declares himself to be gentle and humble of heart, he's picking up on key qualities that were ascribed to Moses that were recognised in him. And moreover, this whole language of taking a yoke upon one's shoulders reflects language that was used about the law of Moses. If one placed oneself under the authority of the law, one was taking that yoke upon oneself. So taking all of these different bits together, it seems to me that what Matthew is doing in this passage is inviting us to picture Jesus kind of taking up the baton from Moses and inviting others to join him in the race towards the love of God. But if we can stretch this imagery a little bit further, perhaps beyond passing the baton in a relay, we might envisage ourselves as we set out on this journey with Jesus, being given a rucksack to carry. A rucksack that contains that commitment that we have chosen to take upon our shoulders. And yet finding ourselves, when we put this rucksack on, being greatly surprised that we are actually not weighed down by the heavy burden of the oral law that the Pharisees and other religious experts placed upon the Jewish people. But actually we find ourselves being even freer to move than ever before. When we talk about the abundance and fullness of life that Jesus came to share, this is what we mean. A freedom to live and move and have our being, knowing that even when we are weary and carrying heavy burdens, we are never abandoned to bear the weight alone. We can always share our sources of concern or stress or pain with our God and allow God to share the load with us. Precisely because Jesus lived and loved and died and rose again to new life so that we might be free, free of the burdens of sin and shame and worry that so often weigh us down. The most profound example I can offer of this dynamic playing out in my own life takes me back to where I was in my mid-twenties. You see, my childhood really had been scarred by growing up with, on the one hand, a mother who suffered from quite severe mental ill health and having a father who couldn't cope with his family being less than perfect than compared to the idea that he had in his mind. Add to that being a young carer for both my mother and my severely ill and autistic brother, and you have quite an unhappy mixture. I've realised as I've got older that when you're a child, you don't really have the perspective on what's going on around you that allows you to stand back. So I couldn't really look at what was going on and recognise that it was because my parents were both very hurt and damaged people 
and that's why they were how they were. Instead of being able to see the external roots of what was going on, I internalised things for a long time, and I believed that I was essentially a bad person. Now, it was partly through the skills of an excellent therapist that I began to piece things together, as it were, and move towards a place of forgiveness. But it was my discovery over a period of time that God's love is truly real and that it's here for me that allowed me to lay down that heavy burden that I'd lugged about with me for so long and gradually discover how to move more freely. Looking back, there were a few significant steps on the way that just made no sense to me if it wasn't the Holy Spirit powerfully at work in my life. And while it's been hard and taken a long time, it's not been an overnight thing for me, I eventually found my rest in Jesus Christ. And for me, that changed everything. I pray that as you ponder this week's reading, with all of the complexities of its setting and Jesus' sense perhaps of you can't win no matter what you do, all of that stuff buzzing around it, may you find yourself able to focus in on this promise of rest. I pray that you'll get to a stage where, like me, you are able to lay down those things that burden you and find rest in God's arms. Amen. Each week on Windows on Worship, we suggest a resource that you might find helpful as you seek to go deeper in your praying and pondering. This week's resource is a classic from 2008 by David Adam, who's written a lot of collections of prayers, particularly from a Celtic tradition. And his book, The Rhythm of Life, offers a really helpful pattern of prayer to sustain us through life's ups and downs for those times when we feel things are going well and those times when we really need God's rest and refreshment. So that's David Adams, The Rhythm of Life. We come now then to our prayers of intercession, our prayers for others. If you have a prayer request you'd like the Windows on Worship team to pick up for you, Please do type it into either the main comments or the live chat during this time. But as usual, because it's a very public forum, if you're going to reference an individual, please just use their initials. In these prayers, there is a response. When I say sustaining God, please respond by saying, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of rest and refreshment. We bring our prayers for the world you have created to you, trusting in the power of your love to renew and make whole. Sustaining God, hear our prayer. For all people surviving in places of war and conflict, we pray for sanctuary, peace, and the courage to keep going. Sustaining God, hear our prayer. For all people living in regions blighted by natural disasters, we pray for timely aid, safety, and the strength to rebuild. Sustaining God, hear our prayer. For all people exercising power and authority over others, we pray for wisdom, compassion and selfless service. Sustaining God, hear our prayer. For all people without a safe home in which to live and rest, we pray for good housing freedom from abuse and new hope. Sustaining God, hear our prayer.
for all people who cannot find peace due to mental ill health. We pray for security, calm and the support needed to recover. Sustaining God, hear our prayer. For all people seeking to share the good news of God's love, we pray for commitment, resilience and integrity of living. Sustaining God, hear our prayer. For all people facing illness, anxiety or loneliness today, we pray for healing, comfort and meaningful connection. Sustaining God, hear our prayer. And now in a time of quiet, we offer our own personal prayers to you. Sustaining God. And so in whatever form or language is most familiar to you, please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So thank you for joining us for Windows on Worship this week. I hope you found this time useful and thought provoking. If you're not already a subscriber and you'd want to keep in touch with Windows on Worship, please do hit the subscribe button that will pop up in the middle of the screen towards the end of the video. A link to the jukebox playlist that I mentioned right at the beginning will also pop up. And don't forget that on the worship sheet, as well as a reminder of this week's suggested resource and links to all the individual videos in the jukebox playlist, there are also some Bible study questions that are there to help you go deeper in your praying and pondering. But for now, as our time together comes to an end for another week, our final prayer of blessing. God of all our journeys, as we go forward into the rest of the week, May you be the light to our path and the breath we breathe. And may the blessing of the Father, the Son and the Spirit be with us and those whom we love and pray for now and forevermore. Amen.